Okay, we'll start with loop. I'll write a program to display the first 10 natural numbers using do loop. Program to print first 10 natural numbers using do loop. So this is a comment. So our target is to print 10 first 10 natural numbers using do loop. So we'll include the header file. So as include stdio.h is the header file followed by the main function whose return type will be int. So int main followed by the body of the main function. So body is specified by this curly braces. We need some variables to achieve our target. So from where the natural number will start? It will start from one. So I'll declare an integer variable s. S means suppose start. It is a symbolic name equals to one followed by a semicolon. So let us write a do loop and before that we can give an appropriate message on the screen what we are going to do. So we can write print as natural numbers up to 10 are we'll give a backslash n we'll come down to the next line and after this first line we can start the loop. So do loop starts with the statement do followed by curly braces that will contain the body of the loop that is going to be executed each time the condition is true. But in do loop there is no initial condition that's why it is called exit control loop. So what do we need to do? We need to print the value of s. So I'll write printf percent d that must be within double quotes. So printf with percent d I am specifying the format of the integer variable and after printing the integer we must give a space because between two numbers there must be a space followed by a comma and the value of the variable s. Clear? After we print s, which is 1, we must move to the next value of s, which is 2. So to go to the next value of s, we can do s++, plus plus, which is increment operator. It will increment the value of s by 1. Once I increment, the next step is to check. So at the end of the loop, body will write while and then the condition as long as the value of s is less than or equals to 10. Now after incrementation, s will be 2, 2 is less than or equals to 10. So we'll again go to the beginning of the loop body and we'll execute these two lines. Likewise, until and unless the value of s becomes 11, it will be true. Loop condition will be true and it will print 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 up to 10. Okay. After we complete the loop, the program is completed, so we'll just do a return zero. See, there is no syntax highlighting because I haven't saved the file. I'll save the file in the desktop area. I'll create a folder called mission underscore hslc. And inside that, I'll save the file as do dot c. C is the extension of the C file. Now there is syntax highlighting as because we have specified the extension. Now this is the <coughs> run button. If you click, the program will run and it will print 1 to 10. Now what if I want to convert this program to a while loop program? What are the changes I need to make? So let us again save this file with a new name. The name will be while dot c. Instead of do loop, We'll be doing it using while loop now. And the only change we'll make is to take this while statement from the end of the loop body to the beginning of the loop body. So we'll replace do with while. As because this condition will control the loop body, we have to remove this semicolon. So while the value of s is less than or equals to 10, this loop body will be executed. Okay? So every time the value of s increments and the condition becomes true, these two lines will be executed. So what is going to be executed is loop body. So what is the minor change we have made? We have removed do, we have taken the while from the bottom of the loop to the beginning of the loop. So it is an entry control loop because in while loop, the condition is checked at the beginning of the loop body. Yes, at the beginning of the loop body, we are checking the condition. If the initial condition is false, then this loop is not going to run. Clear? Let us run this loop after saving and see we'll get the same output. Now as I've said, this loop is an entry control loop. There is a problem with while loop. The loop body may execute, it may not execute. If initially, before entering the loop body, the condition is false. Suppose I make uh, the value of S as 15. 
So this condition will be 15 less than equals to 10. It will be false. So there will be no execution of the loop body and it will just print natural numbers up to 10 are nothing. So loop body of do loop executes at least once. But the loop body of while loop may execute or it may not execute when the initial condition is false. Hope it is clear. Now we will convert this program to a for loop program. And let me show you what are the minor changes or major changes we have to make. File, again save as, this file will be saved with a new name. I will give the name as for, for dot c. Now instead of while, I will write for. And then I'll take the variable as s, which will denote the start of the loop. Okay. So natural numbers up to 10 are instead of while, we have to write for loop. For loop is also an entry control loop because the condition is checked at the beginning. But the for loop structure is divided into three parts. Okay. First part is initialization can be termed as init. Second part is the test condition and the third part is increment decrement it can be termed as update so in initialization what should i do it will happen only once in the life of the loop if it is not a nested loop okay it will happen only once so at the time of executing the loop initially what value should we set so s must be set to one because the value of s is not set so in the initialization statement i'll write s equals to one and in the test condition I'll write s is less than or equals to 10 because we are printing natural numbers up to 10. And every time I execute the loop body, remember once the condition of the loop body is true, we never increment. We actually in enter inside the loop body. This loop body will be executed. S will be printed. So s and then there is a space. And this increment will not happen here. This increment or update statement will be written in the third section of the for loop. The semicolon is not required and remember the three parts of the for loop are separated by semicolon. So S will start from 1. We'll check 1 is less than or equals to 10. If it is so, we'll execute the loop body. If it is executed, we are leaving the loop. At that time, we need to increment because without failure of the condition, we cannot leave the loop. Once we enter the loop, the condition must be false. Then only we can come out of the loop. So S will be incremented to 2. Then the test will happen. Test is now 2 is less than 10. Now it is true. Again S will be printed. Then again S will be incremented. Like this, each time the loop body is printed, increment will happen and the condition will be checked. Until and unless the value of S reaches 11, this will run and print from 1 to 10. And after that, it will exit the loop. Clear? Let us save this program again and run. See, we are getting the same output. So this is how we can use three different types of loops. Now see, in this loop body, one more critical thing is there. Only one line is being executed. When we want to execute one line inside a loop, we may remove these brackets, curly braces, because under any loop or conditional construct like if, okay, we can execute one line without the brackets. So without the curly brace also, or the second bracket also, we can execute this code. I'll prove it by running it. See, the same output is achieved. Okay. So these are the three types of loop out of which do loop is the exit control loop. Its loop body executes at least once. And other two loops, while loop and for loop are entry control loop where before entering we must satisfy the condition. So loop body of while loop and for loop may not execute at least once also if the initial condition is false. 